Fantastic. <laughs> Can't believe I've said fantastic to such a video. Can you imagine? Um, welcome to Misunderstood. I hope you find a fantastic week so far. And even if your week is starting now, I pray that this week will be a great one for you. Welcome to Misunderstood. This is a platform. If you're new here, this is a platform where we give understanding to different seasons, different happenings, different realities of life. My name is Nyawera and I love this platform. I love this platform because I've come to see the power of um, collective knowledge where all of you guys chime into this conversation through your comments, through your sharing, and through even the things you guys DM. I love it so much and so I really appreciate it. Um, to be very honest, I'm so excited about this conversation on relationships. I We, were, we began talking about red flags and then we talked about um, dealing with conflict and fighting in relationships. And now we're talking about evolving in your relationship. And so I hope these conversations are enriching you. And even if you are struggling in one way or another, please feel free to know that nobody is perfect. And in the journey of love, there is room for growth. And so that's what this conversation really is about today, is the, the beauty of growth when it comes to relationships. You know, one of the things I must confess I've begun to notice is the glorification of marriage and the glorification of being in a relationship amongst our generation and younger. The facade of being with a significant other, making it look like your life is full and whole, has made people more interested in being with a person and not pursuing their personal growth. And that has really begun to disturb me because of the conversations I'm having with different people. Um, people who are younger, or younger, and I mean younger than me, people who are my age, people who are older than me. And this glorification has made people rush into relationships. And when they get in there, sorry, they forget who they are. You know, when I was um, in that season of um, preparing to get married, our courtship season, one of the things I kept on hearing people telling me by virtue of my circle of friends, I have a lot of friends who are also my age. I have very few friends who are my age, but I have very many friends who are older than me. And those older friends kept on saying, please don't lose yourself and pursue growth. You know, keep on growing and growing as a person. And I wonder, what are you telling me? So of course I'll grow. I have to grow. But I've come to see why that's a difficult thing because you get so engrossed in this relationship, you forget that even you are part of it. And so this conversation today is about evolving in your relationship. The word evolve, you've had it because of, you've had the word evolve and you're hearing the word evolution is the changing of state. And people change. Let me just let you know that a relationship doesn't stop change. <laughs> no, relationships where there is no growth are very, very stale. So people change. People pursue different things. People's ambitions change. People's mindsets change. People's perspective of life change. And true to say is that um, change is a good thing. It's a hard thing to embrace, but it's a good thing. And so maybe you're watching this and thinking, man, people have left me because I've been changing. I've been working on me. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if someone left you because you're, 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 you're becoming a better version of yourself. So be encouraged, all right? Change is a good thing because the other reason why it's a great thing is that it also makes the other party pull their weight. But in relationships, there's something that we need to talk about is that in relationships, there is nothing that is a deal breaker greater than when one person is growing and the other person is not. And this is a deal breaker because when I am growing and you are not, I begin to pull you or you be, I begin to pull you up or you begin to pull me down. And I think this is the illustration of being unequally yoked is that the pursuit of pursuit of, blah, blah, pursuit of growth is one person's burden and this other one is not interested. So I think one of the things that I need to say is that as long as you're in a relationship, you must keep on growing. One of the blessings of being in a relationship, because I've seen this with some of my friends, is that you can grow together. And you can grow together by challenging yourselves to do um, programs or courses. This is a great place to say that Skillshare has fantastic things that you guys can do together. Learn a course together. Um, you know, do something together. This is a great place to grow because that's the beauty about relationships. But the truth of the matter is that we have glorified being in love and not growing. 
you know, I have many friends who are people I look up to. And it's interesting what these people do because when I look up to them, some of them that I really love and really admire, I have seen that even though they are extremely successful in their career, extremely successful in their parenting, for example, their relationships are extremely weak. And when I trace back their relationships, sometimes because I am one of those people who are like, okay, so where did it go wrong? And I'd ask, and you'd hear them say, when I got this promotion, or when I got, um, I got my master's, or when I, I, did, I, did, I, I, I took myself through a program, I began to lose this person because I was investing in me. I think every relationship should have room for a person to be able to grow and groom themselves. Now, this episode may end up sounding like a rant, but it's really not. I just want to be clear that we cannot glorify relationships and not glorify individual growth. Because just because I'm with a person doesn't mean that I should not grow as an individual. You know, um, I think I, I've shared this in my devotional that you should get, Long Post Alert Season 2, uh, Book 2, version Edition 2. And is that when I got married, one of the things that was so interesting was the... The, the morning of the wedding, I think I woke up, well, really, if I slept, I could be lying. But I woke up like at 3, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And by 6 a.m., my face was done and I was in my gown. I sat there watching my other girls getting their faces done and we're just having a great time, having breakfast and just chilling with everybody. And from 7 a.m. at 8.30 a.m. when we left the house and Tillian went for the service, by the time the service began... The whole service is exactly, the main part of the service, like where we do the vows and become man and wife is exactly 30 minutes, like give or take. You see, the transition from being Nyawira the girl to Nyawira the wife was exactly 30 minutes. But the titles didn't define the person. I needed to grow. I need to still actively grow into the role of being a wife. And that growing into that role requires change. And so many people, I hear many guys say, oh, you know, when you get married, you're going to lose your friends. Yes, you are going to lose your friends. I don't think you lose your friends. I think you grow. And so that growth wins off people. And that's a beautiful thing to say is that don't, I hope you're watching this and you're feeling like, oh man, I lost some of my good boys, some of my chicks, I lost my friends, I lost my girls. I don't think you lost them. It's just that the conversations and the seasons of life have pushed you into different spaces. So drifting, it's unfortunate, but it's an organic, it's, a, it's something that happens naturally. So I'm not saying go cut them off when you get married. I'm saying that growth will push them away or draw them closer. Their reality is individual. So I think that's a great thing to say. Another thing that we need to do is that when we're evolving in our relationships is we need to eliminate, eliminate greatly all our faults and all our expectations. You know, expectations make you feel like you're living in a relationship where you have to tick the boxes. If you're in a relationship with a person, growth means that you never see the next thing coming. So don't push this person into a place where they are living your reality. You, you must be given flowers every week. You, you must be, you must be taken to the spa every month. You, you must be taken on holiday every quarter. You, you must be made to feel like the queen every time. But really the truth of the matter is, is that your expectations have made your relationship materialistic because the success of your relationship cannot be in what you are given. The success of a relationship is what you give each other. So if you are not giving to your partner, and you expect them to give to you, then I think the expectation there is false because the thing is that you want to be glorified or you want to put this person at um, risk. And it sounds like I'm speaking to ladies a lot, but the truth of the matter is that I know many women, I've, I've had fewer cases of this than in, lady, of, in men than I have of ladies, is that we have this fixation that love looks like being given. But truly, if love is the illustration of Christ, is that love is a give-give. You know, you... You cannot be in the state where you're always being given. And I think the truth of the matter is, is that men <laughs> have an interesting way. If you give a man um, respect and attention, more than likely he will give you what he's wired to give. And so many a times men respond to giving through material things. Truth of the matter is that sometimes 
even a good conversation is something that he has given because that's a lot of his time. So think about it that way. Eliminate expectations. You are not, you're not um, a pot in a relationship. You are actually, um, you are to be given in the same measure you give. So you're like a good pipe. So don't just, don't just um, pour out, but also allow your tank to be filled even as you give. So even for the men, I think it's a great place to say, honesty is a great thing to say. And it's a great place to say that when you're communicating with your partner, you need to also tell them what these expectations they have are. You know, when I was in the dating space, um, I think one of the conversations I wish I had more with my now husband was the expectations I had in marriage. It's because we spoke about them, but we had such a myopic view of marriage because we never knew what it looked like. But looking back now, and I, I'm happy that we have these conversations now a bit more candidly, is state what you want to be given and state what you want to give. Because the truth of the matter is, you are not, you, it's wrong to assume of each other that there should be a thing that happens. Say what you want and say it honestly. Don't manipulate, say it. Those two words don't mean the same thing. Communicating for a woman is saying, I need this done for me. But manipulating for a woman, for example, is saying, if you don't do this for me, I will not do this for you. Those two don't mean the same thing. So be careful how you do it. Um, something else I want to say is that you need to die to yourself as you're evolving in your relationship. And dying to yourself sounds like something that is um, extremely churchy to say. But dying to yourself is surrendering and yourself, and you're not just you surrendering yourself, but also this person surrendering themselves. Surrendering themselves sounds like, I'm feeling like I'm talking a lot of church jargon, but surrender means I cease to give the needs I have attention, right? So that my relationship can be of more interest to both of us. So for example, um, one of the things I like as Nyawira is I really, really, really like being pampered, all right? Now, I'm not saying don't, don't accept the pampering. What I'm saying is that if the pampering doesn't come, this relationship will not end. Do you get what I mean? Because seasons of life happen. Today you'll have excessive money, tomorrow you won't. Does that mean that the relationship is over? No. The truth of the matter is, is that, as I said earlier in the other video, was that the word relationship, the anchor word is relate. So if we don't relate in the bad times and only in the good times, then there's no relationship. There is a good oceanship, if there's a word like that. You know, so pursue a relationship even when things are thick. And that means that when I don't get what I want, it's okay because the relationship is getting what it needs. Yeah, and that means that I may not get my pampering every day or every week or every month as I would like, but I would like that in our relationship, we are able to have a good conversation. You know, um, a couple of friends of ours we were telling us about their journey as they had begun their marriage was that they would enter the car and they would drive a long drive, long drive just to buy like um, an ice cream cone. Just the drive. So I wanted to myself, why would you do all that? Then I realized these guys do all that because they were investing in their relationship. They were dying to themselves. And so dying to yourself means that I surrender what I think is important to me and not, that's the wrong way of saying it. I surrender what I think I would always want, but I give this relationship what it needs. So dying to yourself means I'm fueling the relationship and not Nyawira. So I'm fueling this relationship. I'm fueling this relationship with love, with um, peace. You know, somebody said it so well and said men build the tone of the relationship and women create the atmosphere for the relationship. So that means if this man is dying to himself, he's building the tone. If this woman is dying to herself, she's building the atmosphere. So the relationship is being groomed in the right place. Um... Another place to evolve in your relationship is acknowledge what type of relationship you're in. You know, um, the unfortunate reality is that we are living in an interesting time where um, girlfriends are executing submission to their partners and men are assuming roles of um, the husband before they end up becoming the spouse. Now, this is murky waters because I think it's a conversation that needs to be had is that submission is never rehearsed, all right? And the anchor word in submission is a mission. 
And the word sub means to be under, hence the word submerge. It's merged underwater. And I um, don't know why I'm making this an English lesson. But if, I, if the guy, the mission is only established in the union when the two become one. So what are you submitting to if he's only your boyfriend, all right? So get out of that thinking and wallow in the place of dating. Evolving means that you are going to be fully growing in the role you're in, even as you're growing to the next level. You know, when um, in Charles Darwin's theory, when one state of human being was evolving from the... Homo erectus, for example, to the Homo sapien, I think that's the order if I'm not wrong, was that things changed in the body format of this human. So the erectus was straightened up, and so he was a proper standing man. But the truth of the matter is that when he was a proper standing man, before it, his back was arced. The change in his posture gives you identity to the growth. So even for you as a person, stop avoiding the posture you're meant to be in and let us acknowledge the growth when the seasons have changed. So don't be in a hurry to be something that you're not already. And that's what the evolution of a relationship is, is that you'll grow from one stage to another, but you need to be in one stage before you jump to the other. So I think that's a great thing to say is that even for men, I think stop, um, this is a great place to say is that love your girlfriend and love her well, but don't love her in the capacity of a spouse. All right. And so and this is not to say things like, um, you know, show her limited love. No, there, there's a love that God will give you when you become a husband, I guess, that it's, it's not the same. I think for me, I've noticed that there's a change in the definition of love from being a girlfriend and to being a wife. I feel like something changed, something really, really changed. And um, I love it. I really do, because I feel like that change brought about maturity where you, the love became, it stopped being so cute and mushy, but it became real. You know, you're handling real issues now, and you're handling them candidly. So that's the beauty of evolving in a relationship. Um, the other thing, sorry, I'm reading my notes. That's why it's really far from me. Um, yeah, somebody said a quote that I thought was really good. When you're evolving in your new relationship, stop playing hard to get if you're not hard to keep. So playing hard to get and not hard to keep is that you're playing hard to get by virtue of you acting like this guy needs to chase me. This guy needs to chase me. But when he realizes, what am I chasing really? And that's the place I'm seeing whereby as a lady or a gentleman, because things are interesting nowadays, is that as a lady, for example, because I can speak to the ladies because I am a lady, is that when you are in a relationship and you're pursuing and you're being pursued, build yourself so that when the man is chasing you, it's worth the while, you know? And I think that's a beautiful thing to say. Stop waiting for this guy to chase you so hard and you start playing some gimmicks with him. Kumbe, you... This is not the real you. You're just putting up a facade so that he can chase you. So if you will be hard to get, please be hard to keep. So the man can keep on. Be easy to keep, but be hard to get. That's the balance of it all. Um, yeah, I think um, just a few illustrations I thought about when I was thinking about evolving in a relationship is the first thing, your partner will not replace God. And I think that's a tough thing cookie to swallow is that the bible says a cord of three cannot be easily broken not a cord of two you know it's an interesting thing but there was adam there was eve and there was god adam didn't replace god in eve's life so i think the truth of the matter is is that just because you have this guy please build a relationship with god and build it genuinely don't build it still as a, a, i have this guy no don't make the guy your provider god is and for you, gentlemen, don't make this girl your source of peace, God is. So build your, build your relationship with God, even as you're trying to find a godly relationship, all right? Um, I think dating is a waiting season, right? And let me just give an illustration. Is When I was dating um, my now husband, I feel like I've said this so many times. Please bear with me. He's the only one I can use as an illustration. When I was dating Moji, I used to live with my dad. And I remember when we had the first wave of COVID, I remember one thing that was so interesting was that on, we'd have, we, so we used to have a help who would come in and go every other day. So on Sundays, she never used to come for understandable reasons, her day off. But on Sundays, what would happen was Moji and I were both serving at church when we were dating. So what would happen was Moji would come by my dad's house 
pick me up and then we go to church all right so on sunday morning what would happen was because i would be the one taking care of my dad on sunday i would make breakfast for my dad i would make lunch and prepare lunch for him so that he can when he wants to eat lunch he has a proper meal to eat and then i would leave for church i'd go to the car and then we go to church but when Mochi would call me, he'd say, hey, Nyash, I'm not so far. I'm on my way. Um, and I'd say, cool, I'm getting ready. When I thought about that as I was preparing for this material, I thought to myself, if dating is a waiting game, the other party must be preparing. You know, there's nothing worse than if he came and I told him, ah, me, I'm in bed. His weight is worthless. All right. So even as you're getting ready to get into a relationship or in your relationship, I want you to know that if dating is a waiting game, then be on the other side getting prepared. Don't make this person wait in vain. And if you are in a relationship where you are making somebody wait on you and you're not getting ready, you're wasting their time. Or if you are in a relationship where you are waiting on somebody and they're not getting ready, you're lying to yourself. So I have a difficult conversation is that, am I waiting for somebody who is not yet getting ready? Or am I waiting for somebody who is getting ready? Because when you're waiting for somebody who is getting ready, you know that something is about to come, all right? So you're not waiting aloof. So that's a great place to say is that build yourself in such a way that you are working on you so that when the seasons start to change, you're waiting as you're getting prepared, all right? So be the girl that you want to, you would like to marry, be the man that you would like this girl to marry, and be the woman that you would like this man to marry. And why I'm saying that as marriage being the end game is that I'm a Christian and I, I don't hide it, is that I don't think dating should end up in fun or just casual fun times, good vibes. I think good vibes should be in the dating period, but the end game should be marriage. So pursue um, proper and healthy relationships. Marriage is the end game, but it's not all about marriage. I don't know whether that makes sense to anybody out there. I hope I didn't confuse you. I think marriage is the end game. I will end up in marriage, but I am not dating today to marry tomorrow. In this period of dating, I should evolve even as I prepare to get married. So um, work on yourself. I think God, God, has an interesting, God is an interesting illustrator is that Abraham and Sarah, you know, I was reading about them and I thought about it the other day and I was like, oh, we, Jesus help me. They couldn't get Isaac before God changed their names. But it's interesting that God didn't just change Abraham's name. He also changed Sarah's. So for God to take you to where you're meant to go, both of you, He's going to work on both of you. So don't remove him from the equation. Let God work on both of you. So that by the time the good things are coming, they're coming to a place that God has prepared for as both of you, not just one person, all right? So I think relationships require evolving. Work on yourself. And I think in the long run, because I say I think because I don't think relationships, and that's why I haven't had this conversation for a long time, is that I think relationships are so personal and they're so different in their nature. And so please work on you, even as you're in love, work on you. Don't lose yourself. And this is a great place to say, learn a skill, you know? And I feel like, hi, powered by Skillshare, is learn a skill, you know, um, equip yourself, improve yourself, better yourself. But above all else, don't switch off the, the button in your mind that is, I need God daily, you know? And that's the truth about God, is that God will be there for you, but you must open a door for him. So don't shut the door out because a man has come or a woman has come. No, 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 no. Don't throw God out of the mouth. And until next time, please leave a comment. Me, I want to know how you are evolving. How are you evolving in your relationship? How are you working on you? And how do you, how are you dealing with growth in your relationship? I'm so curious to find out. So please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are. I absolutely love hearing from you all. And until next time, I hope you have a great week and that you get to challenge your relationship, you know? And I really love you guys. And I, I mean it genuinely because I, I value your input, I value your presence here, and I don't take it for granted. And so till next time, I love you all so deeply. Have a great, great week. Bye.